here, that's kind of like a... Uh, So in order to um, drive a race car, you must train. So right now we're, we're about to train on the playground for a bit before we go and drive some race cars. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Go! <laughs> Parkour! Parkour! Oh, that's how it feels. <laughs> Coming. Coming. <laughs> so we're here at the racetrack and we've, we've spotted a rare bird. I'm stuck. I live here now. Alrighty, so this looks like the bad boy that we are going to be in. What you getting in? Ah! Ashley, how you feeling? Pretty good. Yeah? There's a mount here. Oh, there's a mount. Oh. Okay, so we're looking at some of our competition. <laughs> and so this here is a, a funny car. What's up, what's up? Hey. Throw up. Yeah. He's actually six foot six and uh, six foot six. Thank you. Here's Nicole getting into a race car. Whose race car is this, by the way? Uh, well, it's our race team. Spent it's the race team? team? Okay, race excellent. step on the gas, uh -huh. the RPM's gonna come up. And then this is your brake, that's your hand brake, this will shut the fuel off. So go ahead and pull on to that. Oh, oh, that do that. Okay. That's that piece here. <laughs> okay. So what you do is you hold on to the brake and you bring the RPM a little bit and you're gonna start feeling the car move and you sit there and you hold the pressure at that RPM with the brake. You're gonna take a look at the light and this light comes down as soon as you see a flash of yellow, you mat the throttle as hard as you can get it and take your hand off the brake and go right on the steering wheel. RPMs are going to come up and this light's going to turn on. And this is going to tell you when to shift. So meanwhile, you're looking down track. Mm -hmm. Unlike a regular street car, you can look what's around you or in front of you, but you never do that. In these cars, you got to look way down track. Okay. Why is that? Because you're not concerned about anybody else beside yeah. you. Because you're the only you'll car. Off. It's a habit. You concentrate on what you're doing in your own lane. You look at what you're doing way down track. The way you're going down track, this light's going to come on. Go ahead and put your, keep your hands on the wheel. So then what you do is you take your thumb, you push on that gear, and that puts it in second gear. Okay. RPM is going to come back up. This light's going to come on. Now you're in third we're gear. We're so straight ahead of the seconds. race car. She's just I'm sitting all in over the body in a second. I'll show you what it feels Nicole. like. That. Seriously? Yeah. So up there, those two levers Okay, I'll get Gord to come out. He'll find you. Okay. These cars will okay. go about close okay. to 200 miles an hour. Gord. And at 200 miles an hour, your Gord. brakes are useless. Can you go get Ashley? She doesn't know where we are. with the parachutes. She just standing over there, doesn't know what, where, where we are. Yeah. Just go grab Once it. Once the speed comes down on the car, then you're able to slow it down with the brakes. Okay. Because at 200, these brakes are useless. Yeah. So literally, that's why we have to. You have just burn brakes. rubber. Would it, would it go on fire? Is that well, dangerous? You can heat up your brakes, warp your brakes, and oh. oil your brakes to the point yeah. where you have no brakes. Mm -hmm. So that's why, and it's mandatory at certain speeds, certain classes. As you go, try and do your damage, but not. Good. See, this engine, it's about 1,800 horsepower approximately. You look at today's modern street car, yeah. regular car that you drive on the street, it's maybe about 200 horsepower. This is 1800 horsepower. So this complete motor, clutch, as well as the transmission, the only thing that holds all this in the car is six bolts about the size of my finger. That's it. Six of them holds all this in the car. But they're designed to break apart, they're designed to come apart as fast and easy as possible. 
So between rounds, if you have an issue, as long as you get a good side. Side. Now, to us, this is still a sport. Yeah. The guys that do this stuff for a living, it's a business to them. Yeah. So after, and it, they're very, very serious. Without well, we are too, to a point. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of fun in what we do. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like you guys have such a community. Like it's like a, mm -hmm. it's like a little family. See, when we go on the starting line, he's now my competitor, and I don't. Oh, so now it's my Friends job. <laughs> it's my job to just put on now his car important. to make sure he can run. Okay. And at the end of the yeah. evening, we sit around and have a few drinks, yeah. tell stories. A lot of people go camping, go to the lake and stuff for the weekend. We oh, end up out here. This is our Same. backyard. Yeah. I love that. Problem. I love that. I love that. So if you go ahead, sit back, keep your hands on the steering wheel, okay. keep your arms in. I'm going to bring the body down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's crazy! Do I look fast? <laughs> Awesome. Where do we go? So we're probably going to go about 230 kilometers an hour. And we're going to get there in about six seconds. So. Oh, well, that's nothing. Yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> that, that's just me on the head. Thing, just, a, just a Sunday yeah. cruise, yeah. <laughs>
destination is on your right. Driving force. Thank you, Susan. We have arrived. Can I hear that jingle again? No. Oh. <laughs> the one time only show. <laughs> Proceed to the route. Oh, so then we're here, okay? Yeah. Alrighty, so we are at the Edmonton DF Tour location. And this driving course location is pretty awesome. It's bumping. We got food trucks, bands, radio stations. I think it's gonna be a cool event. The evening tonight uh, is uh, an interesting one. Um, probably we should start with some thanks. Who started this thing? Where is our radio? Come on up. Let's give her a hand. Tracy Roche is the lady who actually organized for today's event, and uh, you're going to say a few thank yous. All right. Um, thanks for everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, first, I want to thank all the volunteers. Uh, a lot of the staff uh, put in some extra hours, so I really appreciate all you all you guys for doing that. Um, we have KG Country with the pony rides down on the grass there, so thanks for them for coming out. Uh, we're going to be having some face painting in the drive through shortly. Um, and then we've got the Beaver Tails food truck, Megan Bacon, the ice cream food truck, and then La Poutine. So um, if you can support them, I know Beaver Tails is doing 10% uh, of their profits towards the Ronald McDonald House. And that's why we're all here today is to uh, support the Ronald McDonald House. So if you want to get out your wallets, get out your $20 bills and head <laughs> on inside. Um, there's some raffles in there and it's for a really good cause. Um, and then we've got uh, Joel Bird and Synergy Sound for doing all the sound tonight. We've got Allie, Dan Davidson, yeah. uh, Big Top Tent Woo! Rental, River City Tent Rental, uh, and then Kissing Country is on location too. So there's something for everybody Woo! tonight. And thanks again for coming out. We'd also uh, like to thank, um, we have some suppliers here, and we have some great customers here, and we have a lot of friends and family. So thank you very much for coming out to support us. Norm uh, Leach. Does everyone know who Norm Leach is? All right, Norm Leach is the director of our <laughs> market department. And he came to me about uh, two or three months ago and said that he had this great idea about how to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the country. And he said he wanted to put some people in a vehicle in Newfoundland and they can drive all the way to the Pacific coast and stop up in the Arctic. He was going to do some fundraising for Ronald McDonald House. He was going to have a big prize. And uh, everyone was going to have a lot of fun in this and, you, you know, have some awareness over? about the country as they were driving across it. And if, who, who here knows me and what I do in the company? <laughs> I'm the guy who tries to control the rest. So the three questions I had for, for Norm were the policies, the big ones. We have a health and safety policy. How are you going to keep these people safe? The second one was we have a dating policy. The driving horse. Okay, we have to be cautious about that. And the third one is we have an alcohol policy. We have to mitigate these risks. So Norm goes back and comes back a week later and says, I got it all fixed. I got all the risks covered. I said, okay, give me the plan here. So Norm says, well, we found these two wonderful, mature young ladies, totally responsible, no problem with the dating policy. Wonderful. They came up with the second one, that's how to mitigate the safety. We'll plan it all entirely, we'll make sure that there's no jeopardy, and we'll make sure everyone's safe when they get home. Right. Right. He said, but with the alcohol policy, we're just going to have to stick with the policy. <laughs> I'm going, let me see, we have a lady from Newfoundland, we have a lady from Alberta, they have to travel across the country, and they can't have a beer. It's like, this is not going to work anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ad libbing a little bit, but what he says is, is, don't worry, the policy says you can't drink at work, but they're just driving. And I'm like, well, man. <laughs> <laughs> so those young ladies, of course, are um, Ashley, or there, Parsons, please come up. She's from Newfoundland, St. John's, and Nicole Woo! Parker from next door, St. Albert, Alberta. Woo I had to get a little prepared for today, so I actually looked up your bios. And what was interesting was is that both are from different places and very different places in Canada, but they both are very similar in terms of your viewpoint. And I can see it in your bios of that you're both really involved in the local community, and you also have a perspective from outside Canada, which was interesting. Nicole went to Japan through Rotary for six months, a year, and Ashley, of course, is from Newfoundland, not on the continental part of Canada. <laughs> so. A whole other planet. And in, in your, you know, as a metaphor for the DF-150, you wrote something in there which, and I'm paraphrasing, um, I'm from a, a rock in the middle of the ocean and sometimes you don't feel like you belong. Is that what you wrote? 
you, you don't feel like you're part of something. And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool because I'm sure that's how a lot of Canadians feel as they as they live in our country. It's just a sea of land, not necessarily ocean. And sometimes we struggle to belong. And I think that's also true for driving forces. We become national in that we lose contact sometimes, right? So the only way to fix that is to have some young ladies drive across the country, say hi to everybody, have some laughs, show us what's going on, and try and keep us in touch with Ontario. So thank you very much. Give me a hand for volunteering for this. Woo! And thank you. Hi everybody, my name is uh, Ivan. Uh, lots of you know me. I just wanted to take this opportunity to quickly thank you all for attending. What a gorgeous day. Um, my son says uh, just now, he goes, Dad, you have a lot of fun at work. I said, trust me, man, this doesn't happen often. But th thank you for coming. I, I, don't know, I don't know what the future is going to hold for us, but I, uh, I know something for sure. Probably 100 years from now, when we celebrate Canada's uh, 1500, probably we'll use a Chevy product instead of Ford. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, as, as, uh, as a Canadian, I'm really proud of this. Uh, it's 150 uh, anniversary. Lots of you know intimately all the places that Nicole and uh, Ashley have visited through elementary school and high school. And I wasn't born in Canada, so this, this uh, has a special meaning to me. And I took the opportunity to keep a log of all the places they visited so I can show my children very soon, hopefully in the next three, four years, all these beautiful places that our country has. So with that, uh, thank you all for attending again. I'm going to pass it on to Ashley and Nicole. Woohoo! You have to give me a call beforehand. We'll give you the good and bad. <laughs> uh, so they asked us to say a few words. Uh, they did a great job at introducing us from Newfoundland. I'm Nicole and I'm from uh, Edmonton. Exciting. <laughs> and if anybody, none of you probably are, all of you are probably wondering how we got these jobs. And it's a little bit of luck. And um, also we found out probably about three weeks before we were headed on the road. So we had to submit some videos. One was sort of a little selfie video, and when I got the email saying that I needed to submit a video, I thought, no, I'm out, I'm out. I can't do it. I can't, I'm, I, I'm not used to that, I can't do it. And then I thought, I'm gonna let Driving Force decide whether or not I'm good in front of the camera instead of me deciding that. So we had to do a selfie video and also a video to show off our community. So it was a real shot in the dark. Wasn't sure if it was gonna go well, and uh, jokes on them, they chose me. So, Nicole and I only met about three days before we were headed on the road. So it was a big risk, both on Driving Force and her and I, in order to uh, see whether or not it was going to work, because it's a lot of kilometers. When we got the truck, she had about 24 kilometers on her, and now she's over 10,000. So that's a lot of song changes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, a lot of... A lot of song choices, song changes, and a few quiet moments. So I could say, I mean, you can talk a little bit to about where, how the road has been, and uh, our favorite place because it's the same thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, well, luckily enough, we have the exact same favorite place so far, and it has been Iqaluit, e Nunavut. Uh, it was amazing. We took a flight up there, and the flight they had hot cookies. Like, how awesome is that? It was so good. And um, just the people, the people at the Driving Force location, Rick and Rosemary, the loveliest people you'll ever meet. The food is very expensive though, so have a higher food budget if you're going there. Everything's imported. <laughs> Um, and just the terrain and when we were flying in you could see the ice and it had small cracks in it and you could see the water peeking through and the sun was hitting it and it was gorgeous and it was just as gorgeous as when we landed and uh, we went on an ATV and went through these massive puddles and got completely soaked and uh, probably got six packs from laughing so hard um, but it was such an amazing experience and uh, I'm, I'm such, it's such an honor to uh, to uh, represent Driving Force and to uh, explore our beautiful, beautiful country and uh, see all the Driving Force locations as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a good road. It's been a, a tough road so far. And I find that now it seems, for me, coming from the east, getting to be in the west is a real treat. Uh, you had to, she had to drag me out of Banff two days ago. Um, and there, as we we're driving out, there was not only beautiful skies, blue skies, but also a little bit of stormy, so a bit of drama. And then there was a rainbow. 
as we're driving out. And I said, okay, Banff, that's enough. I'll be back. Like, I can't handle it. So it's been a really, really, really beautiful, beautiful time. And we still have a month to go. So lucky us. So we are, uh, you can follow along on Instagram and Twitter because that's where we're mostly posting our stuff. So, and other than that. Yeah, so uh, just to entice you about our trip a little bit, uh, we're going very north. We're going to Whitehorse and then we're also going to Inuvik. So where you can follow us at, uh, if you want more like uh, up-to-date, immediate updates, Twitter is the best place to get us. So at DF, so for driving force, DF Tour 150. Um, so that's Twitter and Instagram, same handle. Um, and then we have also have our website where our edited videos are posted on www.dftour150.ca. And yeah, if we also have our gorgeous and amazing trusty Ford F-150 over there that you all could win. So all you have to do is take a picture. You have to have an email address. You have to be over 18. Take a picture. Submit the picture on the website on the side of the truck, which is dftour150.ca. You could win a brand new Ford F-150 2017 or two tickets anywhere WestJet flies in Canada. So it's better to have a chance than no chance at all. So go ahead, take your picture, and have a great day, you guys. So, thank you very much. I do. I have a new single called Just To Say We Did coming out uh, in about two weeks. We're shooting a video on Monday and then I'm um, hitting the festival circuit this summer across Amazing. Western Canada. Yeah. Amazing. It was lovely meeting you. you Thanks. Too.